This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. I'm gonna do some viewer mail today. This is an awesome thing that we love to do here, which gives us a chance to look at work by viewers like you. People send in these awesome books and zines, so we're gonna look at a few today. So without further ado, let's get to your mail. So first up is this little zine. This comes to us from Tony Skakovich, who is a Toronto-based photographer. Tony also includes a note which reads, Dear Ted, flight delays sidetracked my last trip of 2019. I decided to de-stress by photographing the experience. This booklet is a montage of that cycle of rushing and waiting, so essential to the air travel experience. Hope that, as a fellow photographer, you enjoy this book. All the best, Tony P.S. So the scene is called To San Diego and Back, A Winter Travelogue. There's a lot of things that I love about this. First of all, I love that it's a travel document and it's just the airport, which is pretty amazing. And so I can, believe me, I can completely sympathize with you because as much as I travel, I like traveling, I just don't like getting there. It's the whole airport experience. And actually this is an awesome way to deal with stress. And I love the fact that you took a small idea and created a little zine and it's actually really cool. There's some really awesome stuff in here. Another thing that I love about documentary types of zines like this is it definitely documents a point in time. And I think it'll be really interesting to look back on your zine in 20 years and know what airport look like 20 years ago because they tend to change pretty rapidly these days. Anyway, Tony, thank you for sharing. This is really awesome and you should be very proud. I will link up to Tony's work as well as everybody else here in the show description below this video. So check them out and support your fellow photographers. All right. So next up is this zine. This is called MIG 2022. This comes to us from Mikhail Svensson. Mikhail is a Swedish photographer. There is a note which reads, Hi Ted, Mikhail here from Landskrona, Sweden, called MIG. Imagine saying Miguelito with a Spanish accent and cut it short, MIG. I started my photography journey in early 2022 when I purchased my Fujifilm X100V secondhand with which all of the photos were taken. Long story short, I was four years into a depression, fortunately entering the tail end with 2022, making the fifth and final year of it, fingers crossed. 2022 was a miniature version of the past five years, starting off with yet another tragic family loss. I found some peace documenting my life and my journey towards a peaceful mind through a lens. I decided quite late in the year to make a photo zine when I felt it was a natural conclusion to my first year as a photographer, getting some practice in storytelling and in book design and entering the world of print. I hope that people reading this can get a feel for how my emotions evolved throughout the year of 2022. Best, MIG. So, Mikhail, I really like this. This is very well done. This is an interesting concept for a book. And what's interesting is I actually, uh, when I first opened this, I thumbed through the book first and then read your note. And I could tell something was going on moving from the early images, which are much darker in nature, to brighter subject matter and much more light towards the end. So it's a really interesting progression throughout that. I love that photography can be a therapeutic device for a lot of people. I know it's been for me in my life and I've seen that in a lot of the mail that's been sent in people are very forthcoming with that and so I love that and uh, you know hats off I mean that's that's a really cool thing to be able to uh, use your talent and your skill to kind of you know help yourself in a way and I think that's that's really cool I think the whole act of creativity can be therapeutic and it gives you something to kind of think about logistically this is a tough subject to tackle I think in a lot of ways because it does become very conceptual it's not like you're doing a study on something or a documentary on something you're just trying to get images that tell that story. It's, it's a much broader mix that requires a lot of different subject matter, some of which is probably very personal to you, some of which is probably uh, more obvious. But either way, it really does tell a story, and I think this is very well done. So, Mikhail, I will link you up in the show description below. Thank you for sharing. This is quite awesome. So next up, I've got some interesting color documentary work called The Way of the Farmer, and then we've got Ambient, which is some really moody, awesome black and white work. But really quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the always awesome folks over at Squarespace. How easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes? Squarespace has you covered. It's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit Get Started, you can start by selecting from an impressive collection of customizable templates, or you can do what I do, build your own. Something unique, because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like books or prints? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from. and Just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. 
Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid, you can make them float on top of one another, you can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work. Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Squarespace has the capabilities to not only set up your online store and collect payments, but they also give you all the tools that you're gonna to need to be successful. Managing shipping and payment options, manage your orders and engage with your customers. They even give you the tax tools that you need to keep things organized and stay compliant. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP, sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So next up is a very beautifully produced color work, and this comes to us from Alessio Martinelli, who writes, Dear Ted, I am a passionate photographer from Rome and have been interested in visual arts and photography for about 10 years now. I've always been fascinated by people, their different cultural backgrounds, and the last year that I traveled all the way to the Philippines to meet my wife's parents for the first time. I was initially planning simply to take some memories of my wife's family, as they unfortunately live so far from us, but I ended up getting so much in love with everything and everyone there that I felt the necessity to put this body of work into something that had some form of value, at least for me. That's how I ended up designing and making my first ever photo book, which by no means is perfect, but has an incredible personal value. I won't spend more words into this letter as I hope the book will speak for itself. Thanks for your time, Alessio. All right, so Alessio, this is very nicely put together. This is a really interesting color documentary piece on essentially farming life. A couple of things that I want to point out. One thing that you've done a few instances of here that I really just want to see more of is you tell the story by showing a lot of hands and a lot of people working or sleeping or, you know, the human experience. But I really also love some of these still lifes you do. The praying mantis and the corn. I, that's a great picture. I, that's just exceptional. I'd love to see you experiment more in this direction. My only criticism in here is that you obviously like very vibrant, warm colors, and sometimes the saturation just becomes a little too intense for my taste, and I'm, I don't know who printed this or what that process was like, and this looks to me like it probably could just be uh, some confusion in getting the files over. I don't know if you were able to get a press check copy of this yet or not, uh, but that's the only criticism that I have is sometimes the color's just a little on the intense side, but uh, I think it's a great book. I'm glad this means something to you personally. It's the best kind of work there is. And uh, thank you for sharing. So uh, awesome job. Next up is a book called Ambient. This comes to us from John Gitcham. John is a photographer from South Australia. He does include a note which reads, Hi, Ted. Enclosed, you will find my second photography book, Ambient, that I put together during COVID, released last May in 2022. It almost sold out. My first book, The Dream Theater, sold out within six months back in 2020. After going to the South Australian School of Art, I worked as a professional commercial photographer for nearly 20 years, from 1975 to 1992, until burning out. I reinvented myself, going back to the university to study my other passion, conservation and wildlife. I have just retired after 28 years working as a national parks ranger and ornithologist doing landscape and bird photography for my own enjoyment during that time. So now I love doing my hobby again as an amateur photographer and producing my own work, and if other people like me, I'm so now I love doing my quote-unquote hobby again as an amateur photographer and producing my own work. If other people like my images, great. If not, so what? I'm doing photography for myself. Thanks again, Ted, for your brilliant channel. Words of wisdom and support for photographers no matter what they do. Hope you enjoy my book. Cheers from Australia, John. So, John, thank you for sharing your story as well as your book. I really like the style that you shoot in. I think I see a lot of influences in here ranging from Keith Carter to maybe even Michael Kenna in spots. And there's a lot of interesting photo manipulation as well. But more importantly, I want to back up for a second because there's something that John mentioned in his letter that I think is kind of interesting. And he talks about being a professional photographer for a number of years until just burning out. I've been in the world of photography for a number of years now, and I've seen this, gosh, even since the 1980s. And there has been this stick 
stigma that comes with the term professional photographer. Then a lot of people feel like you're not anything unless you have that label associated with your name. But the reason that I'm making this point is John does really amazing work and it really doesn't matter if he's doing it professionally or not. What matters in this whole story is that he got burnt out and then found a way to get inspired again. And I would even argue that changing career paths like that gave him access to types of wildlife and types of scenery that he probably didn't have access to when he was shooting commercial. And John, if you're watching this, I'm just making a guess at some of this, but I see no harm in calling yourself an amateur or hobbyist. In fact, I don't even like to use those words because none of it means anything. Just like professional photographer doesn't really mean anything. You know, for those of us that are serious about image making and those of us that have a vision that we want to see out, and John clearly has that, then it is a matter of doing work that is going to make you happy ultimately. It's work that uh, is going to hopefully help you communicate an idea to a broader audience if they are so inclined or interested in seeing it. And those are the things that actually really matter in the long run. In fact, I'll share a personal story, and I've probably mentioned this on these videos before, but there was a point when I was in my 30s probably where I, I entertained the idea of becoming a professional photographer. I took a couple jobs. I even shot a wedding at one point, And I realized really quickly that that was not for me because all of a sudden I was not able to do the work that excited me or the work that made me think, the work that made me study, the stuff that I was really passionate about. And so I came to grips with that really quickly. Of course, you know, long story short, YouTube has become my profession and I'm able to do whatever I want. So anyway, this is a long-winded way of saying congratulations. I think this is awesome, but I think this is the takeaway that I want people to get. You got to do amazing work no matter what you're doing. Don't worry about the labels on things. They really don't matter in the long run. John, this is a wonderful book. I love the dreamlike quality to the images that you make. And so I'll link everybody up in the show description. Anyway, that's it for today. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.